the Flight Rising breeding mini game, the simulation, is what brings me back to Flight Rising every day. I play Flight Rising every day and I don't talk about it in proportion to how much I play it. And the thing that I really enjoy the most is the breeding. On my live stream last week, I hatched more than eight nests using nest boons, which are a gem marketplace item that lets you instantly hatch a nest. I did this to clear out some of my ready to breed dragons. I have a lot of wild claws and codals and the cooldown is 35 days, but if you never get to them, then you just rack up a lot of ready to breed dragons. I did that live stream on Twitch, that's where I'm doing my live streams now, but then I upload it to YouTube after, so if you haven't checked that out, go ahead. I will be live streaming on Twitch from now on, however, this upcoming weekend, I will be taking the weekend off. I wanted to go over my current Flight Rising breeding goals. Last time I made a Flight Rising video, we talked about how I accomplish my long-term Flight Rising goals with my Flight Rising budget and the way that works, how I accumulate currency and prioritize different tasks. Today I wanted to talk about my Flight Rising breeding goals and the subspecies. My consistent Flight Rising breeding goal is to make my bloodlines better with each generation. This is something I talk about a lot, but I feel like I need to continue mentioning it. So what that means to me is that I systematically hyper-focus on my own dragons, the dragons that I've had for generations. I do accept gift dragons, however, I like to remind everyone that if I accept a gift dragon, you know, they might not stick around for very long. I might exalt them, I might breed them, I might exalt their children after I breed them. You know, there's no promises with a gift dragon, just so you guys know. Because I really care about the dragons that I've been cultivating for generations. I define a bloodline as a parentage of a dragon through their same-sex parent. So a male dragon's son or a female dragon's daughter, that's how I trace the lineage. I chart the genealogy and some pretty dramatic spreadsheets. I did make a video where I traced the relationship between two different dragons. I recommend that if you haven't seen it. It's really fun to chart these things out in Excel. And then I also name the dragons in relation to their position in the bloodline in my lair. So a first dragon in my lair will have a name that starts with an A, the second with a name that starts with B, and the third with C, so on and so forth. I try to breed better each generation, and what that means is either making the breed more rare or the genes more rare. I want to increase the rarity of all my dragons because my favorite dragons and genes are the highest rarity genes. So that means instead of having a basic and having crystal, iridescent, or faucet, the higher rarity genes, or instead of a tundra, having a wild claw, but you have to do that through incremental changes because of how difficult it is to breed a high rarity dragon when matching it with a plentiful dragon. I did do a video about dragon breeds and the different rarity there, and that basically applies to genes as well as breeds, and I recommend that if you haven't seen that. But every time I breed my dragons, I'm trying to breed them for their children to be better than their parents. So it's a long journey where I'm putting a lot of energy in the dragons I already have. So please don't be offended if you send me a dragon and I exalt it, or if I breed it and I exalt all the babies. I'm more focused on what I already have my hands on. With that explanation of my focus on bloodlines, that really informs my breeding goals with genealogy and these different tasks that I'm trying to confront. So the first thing is the viewer's choice bottleneck. So this is something I've been working on for over a year and I actually haven't really mentioned it since last October. The last election was whether or not I should keep Cupertino or Norwalk and actually they've both disappeared from my lair. The way it works is I'm having the viewers vote in a card on which of two dragons should survive and be in the bottleneck. I've been collecting these dragons. I have five in my lair, five elected dragons from the viewers, and then we'll vote on pairing them up once I reach 16 dragons and bottleneck their children. I 
did a whole series on bottlenecking my dragons, and it ended in a tomb. Get back to that in a second, but for right now, I have two dragons to choose from. There is Philly and there is Folly. You guys should vote in the card on the upper right hand corner of the screen and tell me which of these two dragons should survive and should continue in my lair and be part of the viewer's choice bottleneck. The dragon A tomb was the result of the bottleneck that I did in my lair of dragons that I got from users on Tumblr. And I was pretty satisfied with him, but then I had no idea what I was going to do with him. So back in May, I announced that I have a subspecies that I set up in my lair, and it's called the Platinum Steel Bloodline. So what is a subspecies? From the Plague Flight subspecies Frequently Asked Questions, it is a stylized dragon comprised of lore, specific coloring or genetics, and sometimes a specific breed. But this isn't only a plague flight thing, anyone can come up with one, and there's usually a lot of lore involved and a binary set of characteristics. Like the colors have to be in this spectrum, the genes have to be one of these two or three genes. You can follow along with this on the forums. I just think it's kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind and to work around. My subspecies isn't in the directory because I'm not really interested in it from a lore perspective, but more of a breeding challenge and goal perspective. So I started with Atum and the entire litmus test is the dragon has to be within six relation of Atum. In order to keep this going, I have to chart out the descendants, and the goal is to tie the general population of my lair together, while at the same time improving the genetics, the breeds, and the coloration. I really like the color platinum on Flight Rising. I ran kind of like a platinum hatchery, even though I never really got into selling my dragons on it. I do like breeding platinum color range dragons. That's a huge priority that I have. With Atum, I can use his children as an anchor to that platinum set and bring the other dragons in my lair closer to that color. They also have desirable genes, so also anchoring those dragon offspring towards those genes, towards the colors, and towards the breeds that I like. The challenge is to do this without running out of possible mates. If everyone's related to Atum, then no one can breed with each other. I do have a lot of dragons in my lair though, and at this point there's less than 20 dragons in my lair that are related to Atum, so this isn't a problem yet. This will be more of like an exciting challenge because you'll be able to breed with the dragons within the relation at a certain point, but then there'll be too many removed from Atum, and then you could tie it all back together, and it'll just be a fun way to manage my dragons and the breeding cycles. And if I'm considering that a subspecies, then there is another subspecies in my lair that's descended from two dragons called Pearl and Purdy. Back in the day, I actually funded a different user to gene one of their dragons and I got some of their offspring as a response and they were platinum dragons. And I recently found out that those dragons are still breeding. So I purchased two offspring, Kelvon and Gloam, and I gave them breed changes and I gened them up and I'm trying to start a bloodline with these dragons as well. Not nearly as elaborate as I'm doing with Atum, it's just more of a secondary thing that can almost feed into the Atum thing for genetic diversity. And the goal with that is to use that once again as an anchor for genes, breed, and color because I do have a lot of guardians and spirals in my lair and having something that's just one step up with the Imperial or Skydancer helps a lot to try to anchor each generation in the right direction. Those are my main breeding goals for my lair. I write my goals and my plans out on my spreadsheet and I plan ahead which dragons are going to breed with who and when they're ready to breed and that's the backbone of the entire strategy. I have spreadsheets for my subspecies, for my bottleneck, and my general population, but I would like to, you know, break that out more in the future and really develop something that works a little bit better than I have right now. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep in mind there will not be a live stream this week. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Since my channel was demonetized, a lot of people have joined up and I really appreciate that. 
So thank you to everyone on the screen who's been supporting me. All right, thanks. Bye.